So this is our guided worksheet on pedigree analysis, um, and we're going to go through some practice examples. The first thing that we want to do uh, when we're analyzing a pedigree is um, figure out whether it's autosomal or sex-linked and whether it's dominant or recessive. So in order to figure out whether it's dominant or recessive, the first thing that you want to look at is whether unaffected parents have affected offspring. That means that parents that don't have the trait have children who do have the trait. If that is the case in a pedigree, then the trait is recessive. If it's not the case, then that trait is dominant. The second thing that you want to look at is whether the trait is autosomal or sex-linked. So you want to look and see if both sexes are affected by that trait. If both sexes have the trait, then the trait is autosomal, which means that it's on chromosomes 1 through 22. If only men have the trait, then the trait is sex-linked. If the trait sex linked, you want to ask yourself another question. Do affected males or males who have the trait have affected sons? So do males who have the trait have sons who have that trait? If the answer is yes, then the trait is on the Y chromosome or it is Y linked. If the answer is no, the trait is on the X chromosome or it's X linked. Males pass their Y chromosome to their son. Women pass their X chromosome to their son. So sons do not get an X chromosome from their fathers. Take a minute, um, pause this video, and make sure that you write down this chart so that you'll have it when you analyze pedigrees. So now we're going to look at our first pedigree. So is it possible that the pedigree above is for an autosomal dominant trait? The first thing that you want to look at is whether or not it could be, it could be dominant. Both parents are unaffected by the trait as shown, be which we know because they're not shaded in. One of the ch children has the trait and one does not. If the trait was autosomal dominant, this child would have to have at least one dominant allele. If the, ch the rest of the family could only have recessive alleles. We know because of Punnett squares that two parents that are homozygous recessive cannot have a child that has a dominant allele. So our answer is no. It's not possible that this is for an autosomal dominant trait. Let's look at this pedigree. Could this pedigree be for an autosomal dominant trait? So first we need to figure out what the possible genotypes of the parents and children are. The, the father has the trait, and so he would have to have one dominant allele if it was autosomal dominant. The child also has the trait, and so she would also have to have one dominant allele at least. The mom and the son both have two recessive alleles. If we were to do out a Punnett square, we would see that this is definitely possible if the father is heterozygous. Um, and that should be a capital A on the daughter. So that's a mistake there. So the answer is yes. And you can do the Punnett square out to test that. Is it possible that this pedigree is for an autosomal dominant trait? So if we look at the two parents, they would each have to have at least one dominant allele. The children both have to, would have to be homozygous recessive in order to not have a dominant trait. Um, so if both parents are heterozygous, then if we do add a Punnett square, there's a 25% chance that the child could be homozygous recessive. So yes, it is possible that this pedigree is for an autosomal dominant trait. In fact, it probably is because it cannot be for a recessive trait. And we'll get into that in a minute. Is it possible that this pedigree is for an autosomal recessive trait? Now I kind of told you the answer to that one already, but we're going to go through this um, anyways. So if the parent is little a, little a, or homozygous recessive, and the the other parent, the father, is also little a, little a. The child could only have little a, little a if you did out the Punnett square. So they could not have that dominant allele that's shown, showing right now. So parents can only give recessive alleles to the offspring if it was a recessive trait. That big A could not be there. So we know that this is not an autosomal recessive trait. This one, is it possible that this pedigree is for an autosomal recessive trait? Well, once again, we know that the parents are both homozygous recessive. 
and all the kids are homozygous recessive. So this is definitely, it's definitely possible that this is for a homozygous, for an autosomal recessive trait by looking at this pedigree. Both parents have it and all the kids have it. Is it possible that this pedigree is for an autosomal recessive trait? We have two unaffected parents and unaffected offspring. Now that's one of our questions. Can two, if two unaffected parents have an affected offspring and our answer is yes, then we know it, it's a recessive trait. But we're going to go through those genotypes anyway. So both parents have at least one capital letter, one dominant allele, and the son has a dominant allele. The daughter only has recessive alleles. If both parents are heterozygous, we can do out a Punnett square and we'll find that there's a 25% chance that they would have a child that it has the recessive trait. So this is, is possible. It's possible that this is for a recessive trait. In fact, it's probable that this is for a recessive trait. Is it possible that this pedigree is for an autosomal recessive trait? If you go back to your notes, it will show you that a dominant trait usually appears every generation. So we can see here that it, it skips a generation, two generations actually. The grandmother up here has it and the great grandkids have it. But the grandparents and the parents do not have the trait. Um, so that's one way that we know it's recessive. Another way we know it's recessive is by drawing in those genotypes again. So we have three heterozygous kids, perhaps, um, and we don't know the other allele in that woman's phenotype, genotype. They have two kids. Okay, we know that the um, these kids have two recessive alleles because of their phenotype, and it's definitely possible that the parents could have those kids because they could be heterozygous for the trait. So they might have kids that do have a trait, the trait in question. So yes, it is possible that this is for an autosomal recessive trait. This shows, this is actually a really good pedigree showing a recessive trait. Okay. Um, recessive traits usually skip generations because of that one dominant allele. So if, if a human is heterozygous or, or a person is heterozygous for a trait, they won't show the trait, but they'll be carriers. So we have carriers in there um, that don't show the trait, but they do pass it along to their children. Is it possible that the pedigree above is for an X-linked recessive trait? So let's look at that. Remember, women have two X chromosomes and men only have one. So um, there's the two X chromosomes for the woman. She has two recessive alleles on her X chromosomes. The man has one dominant um, allele on his X chromosome, and his Y chromosome has no allele. And the um, son would have to have a dominant allele on his X chromosome. However, we know that the X chromosome in the son could only have come from the mother. So it's not possible because the mother has no dominant allele to pass to the son. If the mom has the trait, the son has to have the trait. Now let's take a look at this one. Is this one possible to be X-linked recessive? So again, there's those two recessive alleles for the mom. The father has the dominant allele and a Y chromosome without any allele on it for this trait. And the son has the recessive allele from his mom and the Y chromosome from his dad. So this makes sense that one of these chromosomes has been passed on to the son and then he got the Y chromosome from his dad. So yes, it is possible that this is an X-linked trait. Um, is it possible that this pedigree is for an X-linked recessive trait? So again, we have two recessive alleles for the mom, a dominant allele for the dad and a Y chromosome. And the daughter is heterozygous. She gets the one dominant allele from her dad's X chromosome, one recessive allele from her mom's X chromosome. So she is a carrier for the trait, but she does not actually have it herself. Is it possible that this pedigree is for an X-linked recessive trait? So again, let's look at that. Okay, two recessive alleles on the mom a dominant allele on the dad and his Y chromosome. He passes his X chromosome to the daughter and a one, we, the daughter gets one from the mom. And her 
um, geno phenotype would have to look like this if it was an X-linked recessive trait. But we know that's not possible because the dad does not have a recessive allele to pass to his daughter. So she would need two X, two X little a's to show the trait, but she only has one, so it's not possible that this is X-linked recessive. Okay. Um, the children of mothers with an X-linked recessive characteristic. Uh, boys are mo are likely going to get the characteristic. Girls are less likely, likely, especially if the father does not also have the characteristic. Um, is it possible that this is for an X-linked recessive trait? So let's look at that. The mom has at least one dominant allele. The dad has a recessive allele in a Y chromosome. Um, and the son has a recessive allele in, the y, in a Y chromosome. We don't know what this other allele is. It could potentially be a recessive allele on the other X chromosome. So yes, it is possible that the mom pass that trait down to the son. The fact that the dad has a trait really doesn't matter in this case because he does not pass it on to the son. Okay, so there's no father-to-son transmission of X-linked traits at all. Um, they come from the mother side of the family, perhaps from the grandfather. Is it possible that this is an X-linked recessive trait? So let's take a look at the genotypes. The mom has two recessive alleles. The dad has the recessive allele on his X and then a Y chromosome. The daughter would have to get a dominant allele from somewhere, but she doesn't have one. So that's not possible. She would have to get a dominant allele from her mom or dad, and neither of them have one to pass on. So this is not X-linked recessive in this case. Now let's take a look at this really, um, this larger pedigree and see if we can figure this out. So the first question, we're going to see if this is autosomal dominant. So the first thing you want to look at is whether unaffected parents have affected offspring. And I see that numbers 3 and 4 have offspring that are affected. So they are unaffected, but they have offspring that are affected. So this is most likely a recessive trait using our chart. To see whether it's autosomal or X-linked, we want to see whether both sexes are affected. And we have two women and four men that are affected. So this is probably autosomal recessive. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. Okay, um, so our answer to question 10 is no, but answer to question 11 is yes. It is, probably is autosomal recessive. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead again. Is it X-linked? Probably not because both sexes are affected in this pedigree, men and women. So it's probably autosomal recessive. Now let's go to practice B. So again, we're going to ask that same question. Do unaffected parents have affected offspring? So we have um, affected offspring here, but they have one affected parent. So that doesn't help us in that answer that question. We have an affected offspring here again, who has a um, who has affected parents. So the answer to that question is no. So this is probably a dominant trait because affected parents have affected offspring. There's no affected offspring that have unaffected parents in this pedigree. Can it be autosomal recessive? And if, again, if you go back to that question, uh, there's no unaffected parents that have affected offspring. So the answer is probably no to that question. And then the last, is it X-linked recessive? So we know that it's a dominant trait. So first, we already know that it's not X-linked recessive. And both um, sexes are equally represented in having the trait. So again, the answer is probably no. It's probably not X-linked recessive. So I hope that this practice helps you with your worksheets, and there will be a couple more videos um, that will directly help you with your worksheets. But if you already know how to do it, then please try to do it on your own. Have a great day.